So hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Authentic Sound. Second part in the tuning episode. Um, as we talked about tuning before and I just made a break last time after almost 30 minutes because it would be too much. So we add this second part a little bit later to the first vlog. But it's another thing, namely to make a temperament in the instrument. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, very short, uh, the principles of, of the, 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 um, the problem actually of tuning. When you start with a C, you go in octaves, all C's and you, the octaves are tuned pure. That means that you hear, when you hear two C's, it gives no um, vibration, so it gives the impression that you have only one sound. So that's a pure octave. Octaves have to be tuned always in a pure, without, uh, without vibrations. So if you do it like that, um, uh, and you tune also the fifths, and go further, F, F, so that at the end you come again with the C and you compare the two C's, the upper C of the octave row and the upper C of the fifth row, then you will then you will notice that it's not the same C. The fifths are uh, giving a higher C than the octaves and that's a problem because they have to sound together. So in order to, uh, to make sure that you compensate this, uh, this, this, uh, this difference in interval, you have to divide this difference between your octave, between all 12 notes that are in an octave. And that you, you can do that on, in, the se in several ways. You can tune certain uh, fifths perfect and make sure that you have a few thirds perfect like a choir is that's singing and then we as humans adjust uh, ourselves to the other voices so that's this kind of mean tone temperament it's always with pure 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 thirds yeah um, then you have the other opposite it's our modern piano tuning where people say well let's divide this difference between all 12 notes so that every note has the same relationship. That means that all intervals are actually false. And I must say, when you're used, when you play one hour on a mean tone temperament, and you go to an equal, so-called equal temperament, modern temperament, it's really awful. All thirds are way too big. It needs, your ear needs adjustment. The whole 18th century is problematic because in that time you have a transition of mean tone to equal temperament. Certainly music, music of Bach is, is right in the middle of, uh, of this, uh, this period. So you have to choose, you can choose. Um, not anymore a mean tone temperament, but not yet an um, equal temperament, so something in between. And before we can we talk about that much more, it, uh, maybe it's not too interesting to, to, to go through all historical temperaments. And as I said in the, f in the first vlog about tuning, it's not my, it's my cup of tea in, uh, in, in the sense that it's, uh, it's, I, I do find it very interesting, but it takes time and, 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 and uh, many years of experience to really understand what's the, what it's about. I, my approach is more from a practical point of view. I want to make sure that I have a tuning that is tempered, means no equal temperament, but that sounds okay in my taste. And when you approach the tuning problematic, but the tuning problem is not problem, the tuning uh, um, uh, from 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 the from the pragmatical side uh, approach approaches from that side. Um, then you will see that the, the solutions you make 
it can be found also in historical temperaments. It's, there are no secrets actually. It's, it's not too difficult either. The theoretical background is not simple, but the practical uh, ability. Uh, I mean, you, you, you can easily learn it. You should not be afraid of doing it yourself and experiment. What I will do today is just tune the instrument in a tempered uh, way. And I will use a kind of, I believe that Valotti uh, wrote about this temperament and draw others to in France. It means that I start with F and I go make, make pure intervals with all keys, all quints that have uh, one upper key. The rest I will temper. Um, so, so let's start with the pure fifths. So I start with F. We tuned this last time. For me it's actually five minutes ago because I just added this, this second block. I just wanted to divide the, 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 the parts. So this F we had tuned it with, with our little tuning device. Remember? We called it a B flat. And you see it's very much out of tune. It's, it's because of the, uh, the transportation of the instrument. Normally it's it, it, it's not as bad as this, this is. You have to remember also that a pure interval is not an abstract uh, thing. I want to say you can, even within the purity of the interval, you can make little changes. And that's important because that gives you the flexibility you need to make your own temperament. Um, and with the clavichord, it's um, it's changing also the color of the of the of the uh, of the intervals. Tuning is very important for clavichord. It's it's kind of voicing. So what you can do with the clavichord is very handy. You can give more pressure, which means that the that the pitch increases, and you can you can listen to what what you should do: go lower or go higher. So it's obviously that I have to go much higher. So the B flat. It's so much that I will use a little bit of turning. I turn, nothing will change. I said the last time you have to give pressure at once. Same time, you can do it also later. So I, when I give pressure now, I will give another, it's much. And if you listen carefully, you will have noticed that the purity of this quint was already there, but it became even more pure. A little bit. So it's it's a matter of, of taste. And, and, and you have to come back. So uh, there's another thing, just go through the temperament and then come back to it. You have to make adjustment. And, uh, Always. So, so the instrument is very much out of tune. When you when you turn and you stretch and you feel that the the, the tone is coming very easily, it's okay. Learn to go to the right point of, of pitch and, and, and that you can yeah you can learn to, to become a little bit handy in that that you just go there a little bit over the top maybe and then stop. The more you do on the string the less stable your tuning is. And it's because it was so out of tune that I got the idea of tuning. And for those of you who wonder why I play also a quarter intervals, it's the same as a, as a fifth, they have to be pure. In order to make the impure fifths also uh, in the quarter intervals, it's more difficult. I, will, I, I personally don't do that. Strangely enough, this B 
page, like it is in, in the Saxon, Saxonian language. Plus, plus okay, so the rest was lower. You can you can make sure. Well, uh, but this instrument, this this is the the most uh, vulnerable area of, of tuning. It will change the most. So we have finished our pure fifths. I will only tune this again. This uh, octave. And this, okay. Now the difficult thing. We go to the F. We started with this F. We go back to that. And we And learn to make a differentiation between out of tune vibrations and even um, harmonic upper tones or anarmo not harmonic upper tones that are sounding with. And also, the string has certainly these, these so called old uh, alloys, they have an impurity in sound. It gives character to the instrument but makes tuning more difficult. But that's, yeah, that's something you have to learn. But you can can be very frustrating at, in the beginning. So then the first fifth must be we have six fifths that has to be tempered. So that has to be that have to be impure. So there's one sixth comma tuning if you want. There's very little. It's almost pure. So I have to change more than I want. There's no that I would like. And that's so nice on the clavichord, you play the fifth, you give a little pressure and the fifth becomes pure. Of course it's impure, but you can do a little check. You hear it, and then it will not touch it again. Then G, same thing. And then the octave, to avoid uh, the tuning in quarters. D and a fifth. D. Turn more than I do normally, is because it was also nice weather in the last week. Weather has changed; everything has influenced. It's actually very dry. And we can tune this, and then we go to the B, which is already tuned, and it's too much. It is too much. That means that the fifth has to become a little bit more impure. I must say, the more that you have to change, the difficult, more difficult it is to make the temperament. So we can go the other way around, or we can start again. I prefer starting again and also check this. It's even because we, before we check the thirds, we, you can of course start with checking the thirds, which is the thing at the end you have to do. That makes the color of your temperament. The, but first of all, you have to make the circle around. Although I must say, if, if, if again Miklos or Joris is tuning, they will do it immediately. And yeah, I sometimes do. So we know that all the fifths has to be a little bit more impure. While tuning the C lower, of course C G becomes uh, pure. And that's something I don't like to see. I have to tune lower. And that I will do that by giving a lot of pressure. Yeah. 
you have to uh, remember also that when you have to search the temperament or the tuning that you have to tune it at the second time the instrument not the temperament but uh, the, the, the unisonos and the octaves okay. still good Highest note in this uh, this section, you have to give her more um, purity than the rest because it's higher. It's, it gives more vibrations. And the E is going lower now. Airplanes are now good for tuning. So, and I normally, of course, not I'm not talking while tuning. So now we have the circle round, and we can check what. It's like B major, so very sharp. If you want to change that, you have to change this E flat or D sharp. But for the rest. You can check all only the the uh, fuselage touch. It's okay. It's okay. It's a little bit too high. It's okay for C sharp major. Okay. So by checking these thirds, it gives you um, already an impression from what the tuning will be like and what keys you can use or not, or what keys that will be a little bit harder than others. So B major will be in this F, F sharp major, okay. A minor, A major is also a little bit stressed. And there's a nice difference between, between the keys. So again, many more things can be said about this it's tuning. If you would like to start with uh, with an historical temperament or with an old temperament or with a temp with a temperate uh, temperature like this, start with this system. It's it's the most easy uh, tuning because you have you have uh, fifths that are in, in sequence that can be tuned equal and uh, I mean pure. And then uh, a row of uh, fifths that can be tuned impure, and that you can easily check if you if you uh, if you come back and the, the circle is correct. And gives uh, gives many possibilities, even towards uh, music of the end of the 18th century. We come back to that later more. And um, I think for today, we have uh, uh, talked about important thing, namely the temperament of your instrument. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask me and I will be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you for watching and if you like this video and the other videos, please subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.